Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sasha Levin and I'm one of the maintainers of the stable kernel tree. And I wanted to talk about the various safeguards we have in the process to make sure that we do the right thing with regards to the kernel tree. Um, so starting with uh, the purpose behind the kernel tree, uh, we have two main goals we want to achieve uh, with the kernel tree. We want our customers to be happy and we want to do that by making sure that first we uh, do not introduce regressions into the kernel tree. And just as important as that, we want to make sure that we do not miss any fixes that should be in the kernel tree. Uh, now, though these two um, goals are a bit competing because we want to take as many fixes as we can in the kernel tree, but we have to be very careful that we're not taking regressions in, and that's uh, very tricky. And I will go over um, the stages in which we, uh, the stages which a patch goes from being written all the way to being released in the stable kernel tree. And each of them, I will uh, talk a little bit about the various safeguards and ways we uh, have to make sure that we're doing the right thing with regard to those patches. So, so the first one is um, the rules we have for the stable kernel tree. And this is the most uh, basic way we have to guarantee that we're both not taking any uh, potentially buggy patches and that we're taking um, all the fixes. So the first rule is that the, the fixes must be, the, the patches must be small, straightforward, and correct. It means that um, no complex new mechanisms, no new features, no new uh, big piles of code. And usually fixes are pretty small, straightforward, and correct, right? Usually something that would fix, say, use after free or something that would fix a double free, for example, it tends to be a one or two liner. Some of the fixes might be a bit more complex than that, but really fixes should be simple just because they are fixes. Uh, and what this rule helps us is to prevent from uh, commits having two things, uh, like a mix of things. We're making sure that the fix is only fixed, but it's not also something that optimizes a bit, you know, different part of the code. Um, we also want our fixes to be already upstream. It's important for us uh, that fixes live, uh, they already exist in the string. And it's important for us that uh, those patches have passed this bar of being in the tree. Uh, we do not want to fork the stable kernel tree, but we also, and we also want to make sure that anything we take is past that minimal bar of being accepted into the tree. Uh, when we backport commits, we very rarely modify them uh, because we would rather, uh, because of the rule we mentioned above, which the patch has to be already upstream. And if we modify a patch, it means that it's not upstream anymore and it's just our version of the patch. But it's also important for us not to do that because we want to rely on the testing being done upstream. And if we modify a patch, we don't really have a good way to test it again. So we would often rather take a um, series of patches that are already upstream rather than to modify a patch just to make sure it applies. Uh, it also means that in the future, it's easier for us to keep taking patches uh, because we won't be seeing conflicts as a result of our modified backport, but rather patches would just apply as they would on the Linsa string. If we do end up with a case where a patch has to be modified or a patch is really big and scary, uh, sort of like what we saw with all those speculative uh, execution vulnerabilities last year and two years ago. Uh, we require really good documentation and really solid testing as to why this patch is needed and how the backport to older stable branches is different than upstream. We usually want the maintainer of that subsystem to sign off and we want to see which tests were done exactly. Again, to, to make sure that we're doing the right thing with those patches because they haven't passed upstream testing. We want to make sure that we're, test, that we're taking something good into our stable kernel tricks. Um, so the, the first part begins as one is still writing this patch. Um, you are writing your patch and you might send the first or second version of that to the mailing list. And when that happens with patches that have a stable tag in them, usually maintainers and reviewers will pay more attention to them. They know that those patches are more important because they'll end up quickly uh, within users' hands in their environments and uh, running their workloads. And it's important for maintainers to make sure that those patches indeed do the right thing and they indeed fix the, um, 
the bug in question and did not introduce any new regressions. Similarly, if uh, you sent a patch that might fix something, but it doesn't have a stable tag or a fixes tag, we might ask you or the maintainer might ask you to add something like that to, to indicate that this patch indeed should go to stable trees and to help us make sure that we're both backporting it into the stable branches where it's relevant and to make sure that we're not trying to backport it into stable branches where it shouldn't exist. Uh, this is where stable tags with version number or a fixes tag that indicates which commit broke, what you're trying to fix is very important. Uh, we also have a simple bot that fetches stable tag patches from mailing lists and attempts to apply them on our various stable branches where uh, the stable tag and the fixes tag indicated there uh, should be. And that bot will send you an alert if something goes wrong. So for example, if you indicated that the patch should be applied to the 414 stable branch, and we didn't, on the bot couldn't apply to the 414 stable branch, you will receive a mail um, indicating what happened. And it might offer suggestions as to which patches are missing to allow it to apply or build cl uh, cleanly. And the purpose of that is to make sure that uh, that we get responses. What we found that if we sent these mails only when we actually fail applying the patches, it's usually two or three weeks after folks have written a patch and they kind of moved on to working on something else. And it's hard to drag them back into looking at the patch and trying to apply it on stable branches. But if we send this alert only on early on when uh, the patch is still in development, we find that we get more responses because people are still working on the patch and are encouraged to go back and figure out what's going on with uh, the stable branches. Uh, and last point is something that is really a property of Linux's tree, and it's that you can always send a patch in. There's, you can always send a fix in. There's never a bad time to send a fix. You can, you don't have to wait for the merge window. You don't have to wait for release candidate cycles. There's never a bad time to send a fix upstream, and you really shouldn't sit on a fix if you if you think it's uh, good to go. There's no reason to wait for anything. If you have a fix, send it upstream, and we'll be more than happy to review it. Um, so once your patch was reviewed and it was accepted into a maintainer stream, uh, it will also usually end up in the Linux next tree where it will be hit by a battery of uh, usually bots that test those trees. Uh, other systems like kernel CI also build individual maintainer trees and run tests on them. So really, once the patch is in the maintainer tree, it's exposed to a battery of bots testing it, uh, which is a good first bar to make sure that uh, we clear all the... Uh, stuff that automated testing can find. Um, and once we're, uh, once the patch makes it into Linux Next, we also have a derivative tree named Stable Next, which is just the um, stable tech commits it, uh, that, it, that live in Linux in uh, Linux Next, but don't live in Linux's tree. And the idea there is that you want to make failures uh, in the testing of stable tech commits very obvious. We don't want those failures to be sw uh, swallowed by other failures in Linux Next. So the stable Next tree is a very good way for us to make sure that we're seeing very clearly failures caused by stable tech commits and we could address them properly before they're being pulled into the stable trees, into the stable queue or uh, actually in the release of the stable tree. Now at that point, if the patch has a fixes tag that points to a different patch, which is a fix, uh, we might avoid taking that other patch into the stable tree because we know that it's buggy and there's a fix waiting for it in the maintainer's tree. We can't take both patches at this point because this new patch is still isn't upstream and that's one of the rules of the stable kernel tree. But what we can do is delay the inclusion of the other patch until this patch is ready to go and until any discussion around this patch has been settled. Um, so once the patch has passed the maintainer's tree and it's exposed to Linux's tree, uh, it's now getting even more testing. And now the testing are becoming, uh, there's more humans running this test. Now it's actually a lot of developers who are taking this kernel tree, building it, running it on the laptops, running it on their servers. So there's a lot more exposure to different workloads and a lot more exposure to different hardware. And this is sort of the bar we're trying to achieve when we're taking uh, patches for stable. We want to make sure that the patch was at least tested and reviewed enough to make sure that it got into Linux's tree. Uh, and we really appreciate the work people are doing testing Linux's tree. And it's important to us that anything that goes into stable was tested by those people. 
Um, and we really appreciate the work being done there. Uh, if the patch doesn't have a stable tag, but we, but we suspect it might be a fix, we will run it through our autocell bot. So our autocell is a uh, neural network which identifies uh, patches that might be fixes by looking at the commit message. It's looking at the author of the commit, people who signed off on the commit. It's looking at which files were changed, and it's looking at the at various code constructs. And it tries to uh, guess whether a certain patch is a fix, even though it doesn't have a stable tag in it. And I will also talk about how it works more uh, in the next slide. Uh, at this point, also, if the commit has a fixes tag, which points to a different commit that didn't make it into the stable trees yet, we will sort of work with those two or three or as many patches as it takes as one unit. And usually when we will merge, we will either merge all of them together or we won't merge any of them just to make sure that whatever we merge is completely fixed and tested. Uh, it's not always the case. Sometimes we have uh, scenarios such as a fix that is that fixes uh, white spaces or indentation where it's not interesting for stable trees. But usually the case is that we would take uh, all commits based on their fixes tag together uh, to make sure that we never introduce regressions into the stable kernel tree. Uh, so now that the patch is upstream and in the tree, usually most authors are happy at this point and this is their mission accomplished, they did their work. Uh, but for us, really, this is where the real, uh, the real work starts. So for every patch that we consider for stable, the first thing that what happens to it is that it's been carefully reviewed by one of the stable maintainers. We look at every patch manually, no bots, and we make we try and make sure that the right thing is being done there and that the patch is really appropriate for stable. For patches that went through the autocell process where the neural network suggested that they're relevant for stable, we will kick them off for another round of reviews that where we allow at least another week uh, for folks to object and to comment on those patches, just to make sure that we're doing the right thing with autocell patches. Um, when the patch has been queued, you also get an explicit mail. We want to make sure that people are aware that their patches point through the stable kernel subsystem or the stable kernel um, workflow. And we want folks to comment on whether we might have missed a patch, whether the patch isn't appropriate for the branch it was queued on. We're basically trying to make this whole process very explicit for users. Another thing that would happen is the dependency chain analysis process. So when we try to apply a patch into all older kernel version, it might not always apply cleanly. Uh, and we do not want to modify this patch. So instead, we would look at the dependency chain of patches that are required for that patch to be applied on. And you can take a look at the Dietree, basically a uh, library of dependency chains and see how it works. Uh, the idea there is that we would rather take a few more patches to make a certain patch apply and build and test cleanly rather than modifying a patch. But another benefit from this process is that it helps us find other fixes that were lost. Usually looking at the dependency chain, we can see that we missed a different uh, patch that fixes an issue in that area, and we also should take it. So really, it's also a way for us to make sure that we're missing less fixes um, on all the kernels. So now that your patch has made it into all the way into the stable queue, uh, th this place is very similar to Linux Next, where it will be tested by a lot of bots that try and build this queue. Uh, it, it receives the same uh, quality of testing that Linux X receives, where uh, this is a tree that gets generated very frequently and usually bots run it. And it's a way for us to detect issues that come through the, uh, uh, the issues that patches that were just introduced into their queue rather than been there for too long. Um, it also gives, it, it, the scale of this queue is very small relatively compared to uh, Linux Next, So it's actually much easier for uh, users to see if there are patches which we missed or if there are patch that wasn't backport correctly. And it's just an easy way for folks to uh, do sanity check on our work and make sure that we're doing the right thing. Uh, next, uh, we have the release candidates. So this process happens about once or twice a week when, when we try to do a uh, stable release. The, the first, the most important thing that happens with release candidates is that you will receive yet another mail saying that the patch made it into a stable release candidate. And this is, again, to make sure that folks are aware of what's happening and that 
they can object or they can comment on their patch being on the patch going into the stable tree. Uh, and another important thing that happens here is that these stable release candidates are being tested on real workloads. So rather than just developers or bots, it's actually going to real users of the stable tree. Uh, it's going to run real workloads. It's going to run on real data centers. It's going to make sure that um, we don't we don't regress real users with real workloads. Uh, this is a very important step, and it's very different from what we saw in Linux's tree or what we saw in uh, Linux Next, where here it's exposed to the actual end users of the patch. So the tests end up being much more comprehensive. They're um, they're very different from tests that were done on developer laptops testing Linux uh, Linux's uh, release candidate cycles. Here it's real life, it's real workloads. And a question that keeps coming up uh, often is that how, how can I make sure that my, uh, my workload isn't being regressed by new releases of the stable kernel? And an easy, an easy answer here is just uh, reply to the release candidate mails that we're uh, sending out. Feel free to test the stable kernel with your workload uh, when you receive the stable RC email. And if you see any issues, just report them back to us and we will make sure that we address those issues. We will never release a kernel when we're, where we know it has a uh, regression. So really you have enough time to test your, uh, to test the new stable kernel with your workload and just come back to us, report that everything okay, or, or if you see an issue that that issue exists. And there's no standard template for this and it's uh, very easy to, to do. You can just either reply to the mail you can reply to us privately if there's an issue with uh, talking publicly about your work, and we'll make sure to address it. Or it's a very important goal for us to make sure we do not regress the stable kernel tree. And this is sort of the last step we can do to make sure that it doesn't happen before we release the kernel. So please, if you have workload that's uh, sensitive to changes in the stable kernel tree, just test it during the release candidate cycles and report back whether we broke something or not, and it will help us make sure that we're releasing um, a kernel that doesn't have bugs in it and doesn't have new regressions in it. So now after we've uh, released this stable kernel, it doesn't mean that our work is done. Uh, we still keep monitoring the both upstream and we monitor the mailing list for new patches that might fix uh, patch or fix a commit that we have in a stable kernel tree. Uh, we look at bug reports that show up on the stable mailing list, both for uh, issues with the patch or issues with the backport process of the patch. And we try to address it very quickly to make sure that regressions don't live for long in the stable kernel. Uh, we really keep monitoring the work we did in the past just to make sure that uh, any new issues that come out of it are addressed very quickly to make sure that there's no regressions in the kernel tree. And Beyond the work that we're doing directly with uh, with uh, these commits and this workflow, um, an important goal for us is also to make sure that we improve the kernel's testing and validation story. That there's a lot of arguments that the stable tree should be should be seeing very minimal changes as it's stable, and it shouldn't be receiving a big amount of patches. But but that also means that we're missing important fixes that go to the stable tree. And I think that the way to address that is not by taking less fixes, is by beefing up the kernel's testing story. And we do that by working on projects such as kernel CI and zero day to make sure that they're uh, healthy and the work is being done there is solid and good enough to make sure that it helps the, the kernel's validation story. Uh, we also review downstream trees. So we often looked at, look at um, Ubuntu's kernel tree, we look at Fedora's kernel tree and other ver uh, kernel vendors just to make sure that if they take fixes, which do not exist in the kernel tree, we should probably consider taking those fixes as well. So we're, we often review uh, downstream kernel trees to make sure that we haven't fixed any, uh, that we haven't missed any fixes that those vendors took in. And similarly for bug trackers, we follow both the kernel's bugzilla as well as vendors' bug trackers to see if users report real issues with a stable kernel tree and those uh, vendors take fixes. For those issues, we want to make sure that those uh, issues are being taken into the upstream stable kernel tree as well. And another thing we've been doing more recently is reviewing older commit ranges for uh, older um, stable branches, just to make sure that we haven't fixed any, that we haven't missed any fixes going into those um, older kernel branches. 
Um, and this is sort of an ongoing work. So if you see a lot of patches for older kernels showing up, um, this is why. And please comment on them if you think that uh, we either missed any, any uh, fixes, any like older fixes, or if we sh take in a patch that we shouldn't have into those older branches. Um, so maybe to summarize here, um, the process that the stable kernel takes um, has a lot of safeguards uh, in place just to make sure that we don't mess anything up. Uh, we're really careful about not introducing any regressions. And I think that the safeguards I've listed are um, are more than enough, are a really good measure to make sure that we don't have any, any regressions in the stable kernel tree. Uh, the end result of the stable branches is that they're way better tested than Linux's tree, right? Because they're seeing actual real workloads uh, rather than just developers trying it on their laptops. Um, based on historic data of regressions in the stable kernel tree, we can see that the regression rate is very low compared to Linux's tree. So there really shouldn't be an issue um, being afraid of upgrading to a newer version of the stable kernel tree. And really users should be upgrade, upgrading very frequently and not fearing of, uh, of us introducing new regressions. It's also the case that when moving forward between major versions of the stable kernel tree, so for example, moving between 4.19 to 5.4, uh, we guarantee that there won't, won't be any new regressions introduced by us uh, because we never backport a patch to an older version if it doesn't exist in the newer version. So for example, if we have a fix, we will never apply it to 4.19, but not to 5.4. And this is for this reason. If users upgrade from 4.19 to 5.4, we make sure that they won't be seeing any new regressions that were fixed in the solder kernel. So really, upgrading to newer stable kernel trees should be a very easy process, and users shouldn't be worried, worried about doing this. If you do encounter regressions, please do report them to us, and we'll be more than happy to take, care, to take a look and try and address them. Um, with regards to missing fixes, we also have a lot of mechanisms to make sure that we're not missing important fixes that go into the stable tree. Uh, we have a few safeguards in place to audit the, uh, all the commits that go into Linux's tree and to make sure that anything that might be a fix gets reviewed by us. And if it's indeed a fix that's relevant to the stable branches, we'll be taking it in. Um, the auto cell process, which I've mentioned, uh, it's an important process that found a lot of fixes that doesn't have a stable tag, and it's really improved the um, the, the, the amount of fixes and, and decreased the amount of fixes we miss that go into the Linux tree but not into the stable tree. Um, for uh, patches that have a fixes tag, even without the stable tag, we will still review them just just because of that fixes tag to make sure that if the fixes tag points to a commit that's in the stable branch, we will actually look at that other commit to, val to validate that whether it needs or it doesn't need to be in the stable tree as well. Uh, and similar story for downstream trees, downstream vendor trees. We really uh, audit those trees very often and we really do our best to make sure that there aren't any, um, there aren't any uh, outstanding fixes in the stable back. In the state, um, sorry, there aren't any outstanding fixes in the on those vendor trees um, that aren't that don't exist in our stable branch. And uh, that's it. I'll happily answer any questions or comments that folks have. Thank you. Hey everyone, thank you for. Uh listening and uh, I'll be happy to answer questions. Um, so Sarang is asking with regards to fixes and testing, do stable trees run specific test cases to confirm A, patch correctly fixes the problem and B, there is no other regression introduced. Uh, so there are no test cases on the patch by patch basis, but we do run uh, systematic tests on uh, stable trees before they are released. And users are more than welcome to plug into those tests and basically gate uh, releases of stable kernel trees if we cause regressions. So if you fixed an issue that um, um, 
was a regression before and you provided us the fix and we took it in the stable trees, uh, you, are, you can easily add the taste, test case either in an existing system such as kernel CI or LTP or so on, or test them yourself if it's a use case that matters only or mostly to you. And we will make sure to uh, look at those results before we do stable kernel releases to make sure that we haven't regressed the fix. If there's no other questions, oh, sorry, there we go. Florian is asking, where is the whole process documented? Um, so the stable tree process has some uh, docs in the documentation folder in the kernel tree. Uh, it's not completely, um, um, it's, it's not fully complete with regards to the process. It's more around the rules we have for the stable kernel tree. Um, I don't think there's a full documentation as to um, just the general flow of everything. All right, so Piyush is asking, I'm new to kernel development and create the patch and send it out. Who gets the patch first, maintainer or developer? Um, so <laughs> maintainers are also developers. Um, so usually what happens is when you send a patch out, it goes to a few recipients who are, who are listed in the maintainers file. Uh, and those folks are both the maintainers for the subsystem as well as reviewers who help maintainers. Uh, so ideally your patch would get out to all the people listed in the maintainers file. Basically, it doesn't matter if they're the maintainers or if they're reviewers for a certain subsystem. Uh, so before you send a patch out, make sure you send it to the right people. Um, Rob is asking, there seem to be a lot of LF projects like CIP that are trying to use LTS kernels. Is there any coordination between teams? Um, yeah, definitely. Projects like uh, CIP contribute back and they uh, base their work on the LTS kernel trees. There's a lot of cooperation. We work both on making sure that um, uh, we have all the patches we need to integrate it in the stable kernel trees, as well as uh, we both work on initiatives to help testing of these kernels. For example, the kernel CI initiative where both CIP and uh, the upstream process kind of come together uh, to work on making on improving the testing for the stable kernel trees, as well as improving testing for scenarios that are interest to uh, CIP and other members of kernel CI. Uh, Oh, sorry, my, my questions are a bit off. There you go. Alexander is asking, how about using sysbot repros as regression tests? Uh, so that's something we're looking at. I think that the plan was to integrate them into the uh, K-self tests, right? I think at the very least, we want to be running them, maybe in the context of a different uh, test framework like Zero Day or Kernel CI. Uh, we talked about this for a few years. I think there are some um, snags here because um, I don't remember what happened there, but it's definitely a, uh, a test we want to have. Um, it's worth following up on why it's not there yet. I think Dimitri would know better. Dimitri Vukov, the 
is behind all sysbot work. Um, I, I think that we definitely want to have uh, that as a regression test. Adam Ford is asking, when I have the fixes tag added to a patch, I've seen them apply to stable kernels without seeing stable. Some CC stable. What is the rule on when to and not to CC stable? Uh, so the rule is really, if you want your patch in the stable kernel, please CC stable explicitly. Uh, we try and review patches that only have a fixes tag as well patches that don't have any tag at all to make sure that they're not missing the stable tag. So we may take them in manually. Uh, but really, the process you should be doing for having patches included in the stable kernel tree is to CC stable explicitly. And you, you can have both, right? You can have a stable tag and a fixes tag in the same patch, and that's sort of the preferred way to do it. And that way we know how far we should backport your patch based on the fixes tag. But really, the, the CC stable tag is really important, and you really should use it to make sure that your patch ends up in stable trees. Uh, Saranj is asking, could you share a link to know more about stable tree testing? Um, I don't have a single resource, but maybe let's chat on Slack after this and I'll try to collect a few links um, that can help. Uh, I'm not aware of a single uh, resource for that. Uh, Pavel is asking, is there a way to mark patches as not for stable? Um, that's a great question. I don't think that there's a um, standard way right now, but we can definitely add it in. Usually we find that having a comment inside the, the patch, like in a commit message, enough if you just write, uh, don't include this patch in stable. Uh, it's nice if it explains why it's not stable material. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's like a standard tag for that. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I guess I'll close it up. Thanks, everyone, for coming and listening to the talk. And I'm available on the Slack or email if you have any more questions, comments, or if there's anything I can help with, please uh, let me know. Uh, thank you very much.